Early on in my personal knowledge management journey, I explored Notion. It's a fantastic note-taking tool. It does really well with structured types of information, but it has some drawbacks. It's not very good offline. It does download some things, but it doesn't work as well as I would think it should in offline support. It's not end-to-end -end encrypted. All my data is available on the cloud. And now with Notion AI, I guarantee they're taking that data and they're using it to train their AI models. Not something I'm necessarily super fond of, especially when dealing with more personal related things. Here comes though a new software in the vein of Notion called AnyType. And today we're going to look at AnyType and if it can maybe unseat Notion in your workflow, adding some benefits. Let's take a look. On the screen, I have AnyType's website. They just launched yesterday, July 19th, as of the recording of this video. Anyway, it was yesterday. Uh, on Product Hunt with their open public beta. This app has been in development since 2019, and over the course of the last few years, they've made some key revisions that I think are really important to making it usable and applicable to most people. Uh, these three buckets, I think, are very interesting when it comes to any type. What's interesting about any type is that it is local first keeps all of your data local on your computer, and then it uses peer-to-peer -peer decentralized synchronization to get data from one client to the next. This does have app apps for your mobile devices as well as the desktop, which I think is going to be the killer thing to make this actually usable in most people's workflows. Um, and so it, you don't have all your data sitting in a SaaS service. We'll get into some caveats here in just a minute. Uh, and then they do say that it is open source, which it is to some degree. The licensing doesn't necessarily reflect true open source. I don't believe the full product is available open source. I think they have plans to do that at some point, um, but stay tuned here. I wouldn't classify this at this moment in time as a full open source uh, application, but it is trending in the right direction compared to a software like Notion. And so let's get over to the app. I have it open here on my computer. When you first install AnyType, this is what you get to. You run through a quick little setup wizard. It gives you your encryption key, which you should save in a password manager, like one password, keep that in a safe place, because that's what you're going to need to be able to connect your different AnyType clients, whether you're on multiple different computers or if you're on your mobile device. Uh, you will see at the top here that there is this synced button though, right out of the gate. And that's because you're synced to a backup node. If we open up the settings down here under file storage, you can store up to one gigabyte of your files on the backup node that's encrypted that any type hosts. So I think this is an easy way for people to basically get onboarded with any type easily. You don't have to figure out syncing between peer to peer devices. There's a centralized place where uh, information is stored and synced from. It's always nice to have that to an offsite backup in case you, know, you have a disaster that happens at home and all your devices are there, then all your information is gone. And so having that offsite node uh, really helps with um, really onboarding a little bit more quickly and making things a little bit smoother for most people. But if you wanna get nerdy with it, if you don't wanna use the backup node, you definitely don't have to. And if you go beyond that one gigabyte limit, your files will be stored only locally. Now, one of the things I like to do in just about every one of these first looks is go through the settings since we're here already. You can set up your profile, you can delete your account. I'm not gonna go into recovery phrase or pin code because that will reveal sensitive data, uh, but you can get your recovery phrase there under preferences. Um, it's pretty simple preferences here, actually. Your default object type is a note. You can see that there are a few different object types, bookmarks, humans, notes, page, project, task. These are defaults that come out of the gate here with the setup that I have. Um, I believe these are customizable by looking at them. Uh, we'll take a look into that for a future video. You can have spell check enabled, which is currently disabled. I'm gonna set it to English. United States, appearance, light, dark, system. You can automatically show and hide the sidebar if you want to as well. You can import from Notion, from Markdown files, from HTML, TXT, 
and protobuf, which is the file format that AnyType uses under the surface. It's an MIT open source license that you can access. It's available. Um, there are some limitations with using Markdown to be able to store files. So that's why they use the protobuf file type. Um, but that being said, it's still very portable. You can get your data in and out. You can export to Markdown or to a protobuf file type as well. Taking a look at the dashboard here, this is your starting page, which is really nice and handy. Most people create some kind of dashboard. You can create one yourself and it's automatically a part of your AnyType experience. So you can see in this uh, automatically generated one that you have projects and tasks down here. So you can see the projects that you have on your plate. You can see the tasks that you have uh, set down here. You can set an area down here for some helpful materials you wanna get started with, so on and so forth. This could be a team situation, this could be an individual situation, whatever it is that you want to do. The sidebar over here is collapsible, just like in Notion. You can hide it and hover over to the side and get it. Um, I like to have it pinned over here. And there are a few different widgets that you can have as well, such as favorites. This is where um, like you can star pages in Notion and have them listed in your favorites for quick access. You can have a task tracker. You can have your notes that are filtered by all the notes or last week or today. Sets are what any type calls database views, basically. If uh, you're fami familiar with databases inside of Notion, that is what a set is, and they function relatively the same. Recent notes, library shows you all of the types of uh, files inside of, uh, or the types of objects inside of any type, and then relations as well. There's lots of different relations that you can use. There are, quote unquote here, reusable links with meaning. There is a lot to dive into with any type that we're not going to get into in this video, but as we push into it a little bit further, I think there would be some interesting things to explore in using any type. Down at the bottom here, you can see that any type has a floating navigation bar. You can see that you can add a new object set by default in your settings to be note or whatever you choose it to be. There's search, you can get to your settings and profile here. You can go back, forward. There's also a graph view. I have to explore a little bit more about flow, but generally, if you wanna see how your objects are connected to one another, um, tasks, projects, so on and so forth, use the graph. That's the best way to get going. Uh, you can have your settings here. You can change some um, appearance items. You can search right in the graph as well. Let's take a look at sets because I think this is one of the interesting things that comes out of um, any type or comes out of Notion rather into any type. So I'm gonna go into task tracker. So this is a set you can have Lots of different views in here, just like you can with um, with Notion. You can have Kanban boards. You can sort by priority. Uh, you can view all sorts of different uh, relations in here and different um, fields inside here. You can change the view. You can view it as a gallery, grid, list, Kanban. I mean, it's honestly basically a ripoff, right, of Notion databases. Uh, you can check things off right inside of the item. If we open this up, it looks like a Notion database uh, item. Pretty straightforward. If we go back to my projects and click here, you can see also that I can build it out just like a page too. So it's an embedded set with inside of a set. Um, very, very handy. Now I'm gonna go back into notes and we can see um, I've created this test page note. You can change the type to bookmark human page note, project, task, or anything in the library over here, which is neat. Uh, you can open the set of note. You can open the type. Uh, I am just going to start writing on here. So just like in Notion, you can use slash commands. Uh, you can also add blocks by hovering. You can drag and move them around. Uh, I'm gonna use the slash command and look through here. All sorts of different text items, headings, titles, callouts. Uh, list items, toggles, uh, media files. You can upload a ton of different files in here, code snippets, uh, LaTeX, different dividers, tables, inline collections and sets. You can link to different objects inside of any type inside of your uh, your space. You can create, create new objects there. 
uh, and then you can add new relations. So really, it seems like you can do so much of what you would want to do in Notion inside of any type. You can do database views, you can do nested pages, you can do wikis, you can do lots of different uh, structures of your information. You have a graph view, which is really handy. It seems like any type is really a mesh between a graph oriented um, personal knowledge management software and a structured wiki style personal knowledge management software. This is a really deep app I think I'm gonna spend some more time with. And so if you wanna see more of it here on the channel, do let me know in the comments below. But what do you think? With any types local first, end-to-end -end encrypted approach, is that something that's convincing you to potentially explore or switch over from Notion? I'd love to hear from you about that as well. That's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Justin here with Effective. Until the next time, stay effective.